what the hell happened to Nick Ricada? How had I, how have I not heard of any of this before? How did I not see the signs? Um, I will admit, I only ever watched Ricada streams when he was doing live coverage of trials. You know, like the Depp trial, Rittenhouse, Murdaugh. Those were great. And that's when Nick Ricada had his most viewers. I remember when he broke 100,000 live viewers on YouTube. It was a big deal. I remember his battles with law and crime and how he, you know, he, he won and he was able to stream trials and commentate over them. And he had this, you know, normally you have these panels of talking heads. They always suck no matter what the topic's on. Um, you know, whether they're on cable or they're on, you know, online, like on YouTube or some other site, panels always suck. But on Ricada's channel during these trials, it was great. You know, you had him and Legal Mindset and Robert Barnes and um, uh, Andrew Bronca. All these guys who get together, um, you know, they had great chemistry. They all had interesting, di uh, you know, opinions. They had different legal backgrounds because they were all attorneys, but... You know, they worked in different different areas, uh, specialized in, you know, worked in different states. They all brought different experiences to the table. They all had their own opinions um, on whatever the case was. Uh, and it was just fun, you know. They, they would make fun of the prosecutors or the defense attorneys. And that's all I knew of, of Nick Ricada. Now, I vaguely remember a while back him having some dust up with Eric July, which I didn't look delve too deeply into because it's like, oh, e-drama. I don't really care. I didn't I didn't care enough to wonder what the the YouTube lawyer who I watched, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, criminal trials uh, with. I, I didn't really care what his beef was with the comic book guy who actually I knew Eric July originally as. Uh, a guest on the Tom Woods show. That's where I remember him. He was the MC at the 1,000th episode of the Tom Woods show. It was a that was a fun event in Orlando many years ago. 20, 2017, 2016, maybe it was 2018, somewhere around there. Those were fun times. Anyway, um, no real connection between those two that I could think of. I couldn't think of what I, you know any substance for the debate that they would have. So I never looked into their disagreement. I still don't know what it was. Uh, but that was the last thing that I heard about Nick Ricada, because uh, I'm not up at like 3 a.m. or whenever it is that he streams. I always get the notifications, um, you know, from Rumble that he's streaming. But you know, if there's not a trial going on, um, not really interested. And it turns out uh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> it seems that since Nick just does these, you know, weird late night streams about, you know, talking about whatever BS. Is going on in his life. Apparently, he's being sued for defamation. I never knew about that. Um, not a lot of people tune in. He's not making very much in Super Chats anymore. You know, he used to have to do Super Chat catch-up streams, you know, because he would get so many Super Chats, uh, you know, on a given day. He'd have to stop, and then he'd have to come back and do a separate stream just to go over all of the Super Chats. Apparently, those days are long gone for Mr. Nick Ricada. And it's easy to see why. If you tuned in uh, two days ago to his last stream, boy, I I remember, you know, I, I lied when I said I only watched Nick for trials. I did watch Nick in a couple other instances. Um, the Jack Murphy situation was very fun. Nick was one of the few people who was you know, on the air and working in that week between Christmas and New Year's back in, what was that, 2021? Uh, when Jack Murphy, you know, had his, uh, his implosion. And I must say, Jack Murphy, that will go down in history as the biggest, like, internet media personality implosion um, of all time. I don't think anyone will ever top what Jack Murphy did. I mean, you know, when you say he was exposed, I mean, you can go back to my video on the topic. Uh, it was also during that week. I was, uh, <laughs> I was one of the few people, you know, in this corner of the internet who was just glued to this because there was nothing else going on that week. And uh, uh, the title of my video was uh, "Cultivating Erotic Energy from a Surprising Source," a title I borrowed from one of Mr. Murphy's own blog posts. And I, I have to say, 
Nick's own implosion, which has been ongoing, he's been live streaming his self-destruction um, for apparently quite a few months now. Um, actually, years when you go back and see the and see things that I missed, things that I didn't know about. Um, this guy is. I, I, just, I don't know how else to say it. He's a degenerate. I know it's an overused term. I try not to use it. But there's no other word to describe him because he's just so, in a general sense, in a very generic sense, he's, he's bad. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about him. He's made really sick, twisted, and poor life decisions. A lot like Jack Murphy did. Um, except uh, at least Nick, as of yet, <laughs> he hasn't. we haven't found his, his chatterbait archive. Uh, which is what happened to Jack Murphy. That was the final nail in the coffin. At this point, uh, we're just kind of at the... We have everything but that. <laughs> I'll put it that way. And uh, in one way, at least, um, Nick is worse. And that would be his drug problem. That's something that Jack Murphy didn't have. Uh, Jack Murphy, for all his faults... Uh, he seemed to be a, a, a pretty sober guy in all of the terrible things <laughs> that that happened uh, that Jack Murphy did. Uh, he seemed to be of a, of a right mind when he did them. It seemed to be that's actually was just his will. That's that's who he is. He was he was very sober about these things. But what I saw of Riketa two nights ago, um, he appeared to be coked out of his mind. I mean, that's that. I assume that's his drug of choice, judging by the white powder on his nose, which was very visible for much of the stream. And of course, the I mean, the fact that how nasally his voice was. I mean, you could kind of you kind of hear it, and he's breathing through his nose. Is like, you know, his nose is pretty coked up. I don't know what else to say. And you know, it's it's sad to see because you know he, he. I don't think he's making money. You know, he he's currently being sued for defamation because he. He called some guy a pedo. I mean, you shouldn't do that. That's the worst thing you can say about a guy that will destroy their life. You know, you as a big, big time YouTuber, you, I, I don't know who the guy is even. I didn't heard of him. Or maybe I've heard the name, but he's some small time guy. Maybe he's another streamer. But in other words, but, you know, Nick at the height of his power, he was a pretty influential guy. He had a pretty big platform. And you can't just go out and call people pedos who are smaller than you, who have no way of defending themselves in the court of public opinion, um, and not expect to be sued for defamation, because what other recourse does the guy have? He doesn't have a big megaphone like you, Nick. You know, if someone calls you a pedo, Nick, you can go on your stream and blast them, you know? Um, a regular guy, he doesn't have that. And so you can't go around calling people that unless you've got proof. And if you got proof, by golly, uh, you know, take it to the cops unless... Um, you know, unless the cops are in on it protecting him or something like an Epstein situation, in which case you got to go be very public with that. And then you'll have a chance to prove it in court if you get sued for defamation. But if you're right, uh, most of the time, if you're right in calling somebody that, they're not going to try and sue you for defamation because they don't want any of that coming out in court. Jeffrey Epstein never sued anyone for calling him a pedo. And so I've been, I know I've been completely disjointed. I can't believe. Ugh, almost nine minutes in here um because i've i've really didn't know where to start i mean this is so huge i'm not going to do a you know an eight hour live stream on this you know breaking down the decline you know the decline and fall of nick ricada like you know K kino casino did you can go watch their stream if you're if you're interested in that but um i just as someone who's pretty disconnected from the situation i just it's it's really sad to see because uh i really liked what Nick had going, you know, at his height. I was the, the most casual uh, Ricada stream viewer on the planet, like I said. I was there for the trials. And I wish Ricada would go back to doing that. Um, if I saw that he was streaming a trial, I'd go watch it. I would listen to it. It's great to have on in the background. It was always interesting, informative, and entertaining. But... <laughs> We're almost 10 minutes in here. I've completely buried the lead. You know what's not interesting? Listening to Nick coked out of his mind. Um, get sucked off by some other streamer I've never heard of's wife. 
Okay, that's something I don't even want to think about. I don't want to think about these people, you know, who I, I go to to watch commentary and news stories. I don't want to think about them, uh, you know, naked, let alone having sex, uh, let alone with somebody, you know, with, with other people's wives. It's it, that That's gross. I don't want to think about any of you that way. Like, streamers are not hot. Just say it. YouTubers, not hot. And so, Nick... Uh, if you're so high that you don't realize your camera's still on, I mean, maybe at least get up out of your, you know, out of your gamer chair uh, and go to the bedroom or something. Or maybe I guess you can't go to the bedroom because your wife was probably sleeping in there. So you had to, you know, in your little gamer room um, with all of your paintings in the background, I, I guess that's where you had to uh, engage in sexual relations with... Uh, this other guy's wife. All the while, uh, you know, your your loving family is sleeping upstairs. I mean, it's... Is there... There's not much worse I could imagine um, a father to do. And that's what makes this... That's what makes this really sad. You know, it, it, it this is something that could only exist in the internet age. Uh even, you know, in the 90s with, uh, you know, the paparazzi following celebrities around 24 hours a day, they would not be able to capture this graphic a level of self-destruction. The most you would see is maybe a coked out celebrity um, sneaking around, going to dinner with someone who's not their wife. That's what you would see. Or maybe walking into a hotel. You would not see, um, you would not see the the ecstasy in their face, as uh, as uh, you know, they engage and they do and they do the do the deed. I'm trying not to speak too graphically because again, I I, I, up, I actually upload to YouTube, um, so you know I realize Nick Ricada he's a little he's a little too spicy for YouTube. My Jack Murphy video actually got flagged down originally. Um, it did get put back up. In fact, I don't know if it's on, I think it's on YouTube. It definitely still on BitChute. But, um, you know, the Jack Murphy response team, uh, that he put together during that week, his war room, they did flag my video. And so I am a little sensitive about talking, talking about these sorts of topics. But anyway, it's, it's really sad for someone to go this route. And not for them. I mean, obviously, you know, if it's Jack Murphy, you make fun of him. You know, that's funny. Although, now that I think about it, Jack Murphy did have kids, didn't he? But his, you don't think of it so much. Jack Murphy, I don't think, talked about his kids as much. I mean, Nick Ricada, it's a little different. His kids are living in that same house. And that was what my thought jumped to. I think that's what everybody... Who, who saw that disgusting display, that's what their thoughts jumped to. This is what you're doing with your life while your kids are sleeping upstairs. You're getting high and having sex on stream. You know, Jack Murphy, sure, he had a lot of sex on a lot of streams. But as far as we know, his kids were nowhere near because he's divorced. His kids... I assume, were with their mother. And Jack Murphy was getting it on uh, in front of a large audience with his own wife. Or with his new wife, I should say. And so I, I don't know how what I would do if I were any of his kids. Um, I mean, it's something, it's something you can't, you can't forgive that very easily. It's, not, it's certainly something you could never forget. You'll always know that your dad did that, and you'll always know that anyone you meet who knows who your dad is probably knows that your dad did that. It's one of the most humiliating things I can imagine. And it just really makes me wonder about sort of the, uh, the ethics of social media, how it leads people down these paths. You know, is this – are these are people who end up like this, are they people who would have been sick to generates no matter what? Or is there something that comes with the, you know, uh, 
the internet celebrity, you know, and, and I use that word very, very loosely. You know, Jack Murphy had a weekly segment on someone on uh, Tim Pool's live stream. Jack Murphy was not a celebrity, but I'm using that term very lightly in the sense that there were people who Jack Murphy will never meet who knew him and probably liked him. Same is true with Nick Ricada. Um, does does that cor- does that corrupt people's minds? I mean, we know fame. You know, that's a you know that's a that's a pretty old adage. Fame, not great for the soul. But it used to be, even if you were famous, there was there was still a lot of your life that was private. These people who do hours and hours of live streams every day, a good chunk of their lives, let's say one third of it, is broadcast directly to the rest of the world. Their lives become public. And when someone goes off the deep end like this, it should not be public. People go through these things, these issues every day. All sorts of people who we will never meet, who will never know. They have problems with drug use, problems with infidelity. They're bad parents. And the rest of the world doesn't just watch that happen. You know, it's not healthy, I don't think, even for the viewer to watch that happen because it's not something. Because it's the kind of thing, if you see someone in your life who's acting that way, you should intervene to stop them. Or if they're a lost cause, you know, help the people around them and then just distance yourself from that person. It's a little different when this is something on the internet and people are just literal spectators. Watching a man gurgle and and, and, and and snivel as he just sort of wallows in his own intoxication. I don't think that's good for the viewers either. It's disturbing. And, you know, being alerted to seeing this incident, uh, you know, seeing Nick tw- uh, trending on Twitter, um, <clears throat> it has uh, alerted me to some older things that I that I hadn't seen about him. Uh, like the fact that he went to a swingers resort or that he would uh, take his wife to, you know, some sex shop, which is famous for uh, uh, impromptu group sex. And then, of course, the one thing I did know is they used to have this fellow Drex on um, who was a literal black bull who would come on and talk about how he would you know, cuckold other men, and it was really sick, and I would, you know, and I would go like, ugh, you know, I'd turn the stream off and go like, well, why does Riketa have this guy on? Is he some kind of cuck? Well, apparently he is. I didn't think that. Um, it, before, I just thought, oh, maybe he was doing it for, you know, late night, weird, gross-out humor. Oh, let's have a, let's have a, a, a bull come on and talk about cuckoldry. It's like, no, apparently, um, apparently their relationship was not quite what I thought. At least that's the impression I get now, because if Nick is this degenerate, you know, um, if he's getting high and having sex with other women on stream, <laughs> I would imagine that what what actually goes on in private um, is as bad or worse. So as someone who um, has enjoyed his work in the past... And it's just like a human being. And I, I don't mean that to be like a douche. I seriously mean that. Um, because he has kids. I hope that he gets help. I hope that he stops whatever he's doing. Um, I hope that he can earn his family's forgiveness by actually working to earn it. I don't know why this was so much harder to watch than Jack Murphy. I guess because Jack Murphy was just such a clown. He made it really easy uh, to laugh at him. But, but with Riketa, it's just sad. You know, Riketa's, Riketa's not laughing with us. He's not, he's not giving us a lot of ammo. It, it doesn't feel like a lighthearted situation. You know, it's kind of how I feel about, um, like, Charlie Sheen's daughter or Alec Baldwin's daughter. Well, hell, you look at how screwed up Charlie Sheen's daughter ended up becoming. Um, When people self-destruct like this as fathers, you know, it leaves scars on your children, you know, and you don't want to do that. 
it's hard enough for kids under the best of circumstances to grow up into normal functioning adults in this day and age. You could have people with a perfectly loving two-parent household who, you know, turn into a freak. Don't make that any easier for them by screwing yourself up and screwing up their childhood by extension. If you're a father, you don't get to make these kinds of mistakes. So anyway, um, with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one. And uh, hopefully, hopefully nothing, nothing, uh, nothing insane will happen that will warrant me talking about this again because... You know, I, th I thought it might be a little fun to come in and poke fun at Nick, but as soon as I hit record, it's just, it's just sad, you know. It's, I couldn't bring myself to do it.